Okay, let's dive in a little more to this no lending, no borrowing point, which this is a point where you're not gonna need a bank. You're not gonna borrow money. You're also not gonna save money. This means that my amount of consumption is going to equal to my current resources, which is Y1 plus W1, and that my future consumption or my period two consumption is going to be all of my future resources, which is Y2 plus W2. Now, where is this going to be? Well, that depends on what those numbers are. What is your current resource and what is your future resource? Let's just go ahead and assume that it's right here. Why is it in this point? I don't know. I just picked a point. So if I go down here to consumption one, this number would be whatever Y1 plus W1 is. And this number right here would be Y2 plus W2. So all of my current resources are here. All of my future resources are here. I'm not borrowing, nor am I saving. So we're going to label this as my no lending, no borrowing point. So why is this important? Well, it tells us whether or not this economic agent is a borrower or a saver. Because what if I'm over here? What if this is the choice of consumption? So what about this point one? What if this one, which is C1 and C2, that's a two, right? What if that's, what if it's this one? Well, what do I notice? I am consuming more than my current resources. How am I able to consume more than my current resources? Well, I'm gonna have to borrow against my future income and my future wealth. That means anything to the right of the no lending, no borrowing point, anything over here is going to represent a borrower. This is going to be, uh, important and interesting when we start talking about changes to interest rates. Let's look at the other side. What if there's someone who is up here on this intertemporal budget line? Speaking of intertemporal budget line, let's make sure we're always labeling our intertemporal budget line because if we have multiple ones, we're going to want to label those separately. So let's say we're up here in this red mark where we have a much higher level of consumption in period two, a much lower level of consumption in period one. Now, if I want to consume more in period two than what these period two resources are, right? These are my period two resources, but I'm consuming more. How is that possible? That's only possible, right? If we save money. And it shows that, right? Because look down here. I'm consuming less than my current resources. What must I be doing? I must be saving that amount. So I'm saving this amount in order to consume extra. So anything that's to the left of that no lending, no borrowing point, anything that's above that no lending, no borrowing point, we're going to say is a saver. So this is very, very interesting to figure out how we're going to be representing different people in our uh, consumption model, whether it be borrowers or savers, it's all dependent on this no lending, no borrowing point. A person who's right here at the no lending, no borrowing point, they are not borrowing and they're not saving their money. Okay? Sometimes this no lending, no borrowing point could be up here, meaning that their current resources are less than what their future resources are going to be. Maybe it's down here. Maybe it's Maybe we're looking at someone who's going to be retiring in the future. And so their current resources are a lot higher than what their future income is going to be. It doesn't matter where it is. We just know that there's going to be a specific point where the no lending, no borrowing point is, and everything to the right is borrowers, everything to the left is savers.